You're listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with host Doc Martin. Stay tuned in or call in. You won't want to miss what's happening next. How do you step into your maximum potential? How do you connect your spiritual drive with your physical path? Stick around as Doc Martin takes listeners on a journey through the seen and unseen, the accepted and the unbelievable. Get ready to meet the maximum you the world needs on Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin now. Hi, everybody. I'm Doc Martin. I'm here with Dr. Pat. This is Maximum Medicine, and I'm joined with our guest today, Donna Marie. We'll get to her in a minute. This is about talking about what I developed in my Maximum Medicine program. I decided after years of being a physician and watching people struggle, people don't have the tools they need to heal themselves. And I believe that we can heal ourselves or at least get some assistance. That assistance is often spiritual, definitely connected to nature. I wrote a book called Maximize Your Healing Power, and that's coming out in the spring, probably late May. I want to go through that little bit of that program and show you, and Donna has graciously agreed for me to do an assessment with her and then to show her where she sits as I see the pieces and what I would suggest to her that she can work on and bring in for any issue. It doesn't have to be a physical health issue, although that's what my book is about. It can be about any life challenge. So Dr. Pat, how about if we talk yeah. about what is all about maximum medicine and yeah. what, um, so I want to spend a few minutes to go through that. Yeah. And you and I have worked now for, gosh, five years on developing this and putting together how can we process a person figure them out. And I put on my physician hat and I'm trained as a shamanic healer and an energy healer, put on my other hat. And I see, I see ways yeah. of assessment yeah. and you and I have talked about those. Yeah. I want to make a comment though. When we first started this and this is, this is interesting. I try to stay on top of not just what goes on in the world, but I try to stay on top on research. Why? I don't know. I had a great <laughs> committee chair in my doctoral program who taught me the importance of it. And she was my friend. And we did a lot of, did a lot of article writing and it was so important. But here's what I want to say before you begin. When you and I started down this road, barely could we find, or me, barely could I find anything substantial in the way of academic conversations, research abstracts on science, medicine, metaphysics, and spirituality. And now when you start to read these articles, the, the terminology that people are using, naturalistic metaphysics, what is that shamanism? So I just wanna make a comment that sometimes people may think the world isn't turning, we're not making progress, you were way out in front of this before a lot of people were sharing. And so now you're bringing it all together to explain a multidimensional nature of healing. That's what Donna's gonna to experience today. Well, I love it because, well, Donna, you don't know this about me, but before I became a physician, I trained in graduate school as a physiologist and I taught medical students when I at the university in, in Georgia. And physiology is all about how the parts of the body work together. You may, you may know that already. And when I see it and I see the, the miraculous nature of healing and I just see all the pieces. So then when I added the energetic part that I learned after medical school, and you can see, you begin to see things that may not be right there that you could touch the intangible, but you can sense stuff. And when you bring those pieces in, the power for healing goes up exponentially. Yeah. And I like that. And I think people deserve to have that at their fingertips. Yeah. One of my pet peeves, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little mouthing off here. <laughs> Good idea. It's, it's like what Pat said about we call this now naturalistic metaphysics. It's like scientists and doctors loved. They did this. It started 60, 80 years ago. Give it this scientific name, and it becomes the woo-woo secret club of the high priests that the average person had no access to. That drives me crazy. I believe that everything that's known should be simplified, translated, explained, so that everybody has access to it. But it's been a big secret. You know, doctors say, oh, you don't, you know, this is probably 30 years. Maybe they still do it. I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to worry. You let me worry about that. Um, or let's put, you know, they'll come in and say you had a myocardial infarction. Well, what does that mean? Now you come in and say, I'm sorry, but you had a heart attack, but we can help you. That kind of talk, that secret scientific medical language it puts a hierarchy between the yeah. healer and the patient. And I hate that. Yeah. So one, probably one of the energetics of my book is to level the playing field. I believe that every person has power. The power often exists in your consciousness, in your intention, in your willingness to ask for help from the unseen world. I call that God, angels nature, nature spirits, and really, really make a change where it looks like none is possible. Yeah. So anyway, that was a I, bit of a- No, I love that you a, mentioned that because we're setting the stage for introducing something today, Donna, and everybody listening that you're gonna hear a lot more of. Now, here's what I wanna say. What are some of these, I don't know, abstracts isn't that what we call isn't that the weirdest name for an academic summary right abstract but here's what they all say and this one in particular says i'm going to make a case that says the way we approach science and metaphysics or naturalistic metaphysics is the same so this is what they're saying they're saying when you are looking at how a doctor or anybody in a metaphysical physical field feel infers to something, they use the same process. So this is the first article that said, wait a minute, why are we so at odds with each other when we approach these things the same way? That's what Dr. Sharon Martin has done. She has taken it all, put it together and says, I do this here, I do this here. Now you all can look at this and understand this in a way you wake up every day and live your life. That's what we need now, right, Sharon? We do. We, we need, we need, people need to be empowered. Yep. Yeah. So this is, this is the kind of the uh, brief summary of the maximum medicine approach. One of the approaches that um, is in my book and that Donna will use today in, in doing an assessment for you. If you will show the Chicana, the plain Chicana, just, so when I look at patients and people struggling of any situation, I was so taken by the Andean, as in um, Bolivia, Peru, the Andean symbol of the Southern Cross and the Chicana, and it's very much a stair step. And, it, and it, I see it going around in a spiral, and I think about people's healing is you do something, but then you plateau, and then you do something more and you plateau, but you're higher than you were before. And that I've found in patients because you can tell them and they do something, but then it seems like they're at a standstill. But I believe energetically and physically, you need that for healing and integrating. So I really was taken by that symbol. And then I started to, in my shamanic training, see these things swirling around patients. And these are constructs that are used in shamanism and in indigenous medicine. And the first is the concept of the, the medicine wheel. So you have the four cardinal directions and they represent places on a process of your inner journey. The South where you recognize your problem. The West where you have the courage to face it. The North where you bring in help, often from ancestors, but it can be from higher guides. And then you come around to the east 
and you've gotten some new insight and you're up a level. So I see this sort of, where is the person in their journey? And that can be um, an emotional journey, a physical journey, a health journey. Then I saw, well, how are people taking this? Where are they and how they're thinking about this? And Lydia, if you'll show the wheel of perspectives, are you in the literal world? I have patients who come in all the time and they tell me their symptoms. This, you know, my foot doesn't work, my back doesn't work. Um, and they'll say, I feel hot, I feel cold, I feel this, I feel that. Very literal world. But there are also a lot of emotions associated with that. So the next part of the perspectives are how do you feel about it? Well, you can come in and I have patients who come in who are very disempowered and they're miserable. They're down and out always about the health condition and often out of proportion to how serious the health condition is. They've made this whole process about themselves stuck in the emotion of, of how burdened and uncomfortable they are. And I understand that many of them are in pain or discomfort. But then you take the next perspective and you take it, for me, I call it the spiritual level. Can you look at this as a journey? And, and I believe in a soul. So I think about what's your soul's destiny for this lifetime. I believe in multiple lives. How can I see this? If you were to talk the story of your illness, why are you on a journey that has you in back pain all the time? Is there a story we can understand that about? In other words, you're talking about the myth of the person's life, the myth as in uh, a mythic journey, not as in a makeup thing. So are you burdened? Do you feel like you're weighed down? Are you carrying too much load? Is that why your back's hurting? In other words, you start to see this from a higher perspective. You start to see this from the journey of your soul. And is this how you want your life to go? And if not, can we change something here to change that story? And then the, as you go around the wheel, you hit the energetic perspective. And that to me is where you surrender it to the higher sources. I happen to believe in nature spirits. I believe in the power of the earth energies. I believe in the power of the stars. I believe in ascended beings. I think there are multiple intelligences in the universe that have power and we can access those. And that's a big chapter in my book are accessing your helpers. Pat, you know about helpers. We talk about those yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I know I the chapter I wrote in, in the book that I think that both of us participated in, you know, really talked about the fact that what if we could just pay attention to the signs? What if we just know, and you know what I love about this? Everybody's got this. I mean, they may not say, you know, Sharon, I really have an intuition that something's wrong with my finger, but they know. Have, have you ever watched a mother who intuitively knows you about know. a child or someone that owns a pet and they know, they look mm -hmm. at that pet and they're like, right. They're like, oh my God, there's something wrong with Sadie. She looks really right. down and depressed. I mean- right. They're not saying, you know what, I intuitively feel this, I'm sensing this, it's part of the shocker in my body that I'm getting it and I'm tapping into her. But we know this, what you've done is you've organized a systemic approach for us to be able to learn this. That's what I hear you talking about. And one of the big pieces, and Donna will come to this also, is to really ramp up the power of your intuition. We all have it. Yeah. And then we have to start training ourselves to learn from it, to pay attention to it, to honor it. Um, I, have, I have patients who come in. There's some who have panic disorder and they come in and they say there's something wrong with them all the time. I just know it. But when you hear that, even though you do eight tests and they're still saying it, you know, you kind of wonder maybe this is all worries in their head. But somebody says something's not right. Well, I pay attention or they say, you know, I felt like 
things weren't going very well. And I said, what do you, what do you mean? Um, I, I felt like I was, I said, did you feel like you were heading to the edge? You take, you stop and you pay attention. Um, but anyway, let's get back on track. Another wheel, another way to look at what's going on are using the elements. And those are um, go, again, going around clockwise in one of the wheels. I call these the wheels of healing. Um, the elements of fire, water, earth, and air. Those are very Chinese medicine, but they are energies, powerful, fundamental building blocks of energies in our, in our world, in our universe. Then we also have the two wheels that I compiled, that I came up with, is where I see people in their process. So the first one I call the four A's. And the first is you have to be aware of your issue. And most people are aware because something hurts or um, I, I won't be too graphic, but they can't stop going to the bathroom. So they're aware of something. But then you need to really allow help in. Well, that even means going to the doctor or paying attention. I have so many guys who are there because their wives made them come. But anyway, pay attention to somebody, allow help. This is where we talk in the book about the helpers and how you can tap into helping energies. Then you need to take action. And this talks about what kinds of actions can you do that are shamanic in nature, which involve ritual, um, intuition, quiet time, assistance with the helpers. And then you've got to affirm it. Once you act, you can't just act and go away. You've got to affirm it. And then the fourth, uh, the final, sorry, the fifth wheel, and I'll just do this briefly before we break, is you've got to have intuition. You've got to amplify that intuition, really, really get it honed down correctly. Then you've got to set an intention and you take that intention to ritual. And that's really where the shamanic processes come in. When we go to ritual, we are going to a sacred moment between you and your intention and the energies you call in. Sit by the fire is probably the most ancient ritual I can think of. Maybe you want to write something on a piece of paper and have the fire burn it away. Many things that you can do for ritual, and we can talk about some of those when I do your assessment. So in those wheels, I just saw these things spinning around in ways that I could assess a person. And um, we're going to take a short break. And when I come back from the break, I'm going to show an animated vision of these wheels all working together and how I saw it and how uh, Transformation Talk Radio producers created this gorgeous video. And then we'll get into your assessment. So do you have any questions? I know that was probably just a lot of facts landing on you. Uh, no, I don't have any questions. I do have one. Uh, when you're explaining things, is it okay if I just jump in, if I have something to say? Absolutely. Or, 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 okay, because I didn't want to interrupt you. No, no, no. You can say, <laughs> hang on a minute. I don't get that. Or, yeah. <laughs> no, have anything before we take a break? Pardon? Donna, yeah. Donna yeah. do you have anything before we take a break? Uh, no, just I wanted to know uh, if I could jump. Yeah, just oh, if yeah. I could jump. Yeah. Yeah. Jump, jump, jump. Yeah, interactive. It's good. Before we go to break, Sharon, please tell everybody their website, how they can find out about you. And okay. let's make sure that anybody that's watching, if you go to the website, and of course, we have got our website coming, popping up on the screen if you're watching. But when you go there, you're going to be able to see a lot of this of what we're talking about in full living color. Uh, website, Sharon, please. www drsharonmartin.com. So drsharonmartin.com. It's got yep. how, to, how to email me and all the different ideas that are in there. You'll see it. You can ponder it and yeah. think about how I can help you. So I love it. Great. Thank you. Let's take a short break, everybody. When we come back, you're going to see how all of this works and how Dr. Sharon Martin brings a new version, a new element, a new dimension to healing to the forefront. We'll be right back.
Hi, everybody. We're back. I'm Doc Martin with Maximum Medicine. Dr. Pat's co-hosting with me, and we are really happy because we're going to demonstrate at least a component of the Maximum Medicine approach. And Donna Marie has been wonderful and generous in giving us her time to be sort of a participant. We'll, we won't say guinea pig because that sounds too experimental. But hi, Donna. I'm, thank you so much. Thank you. So bring to me, well, you can bring to me anything and let me apply, lead you through some of the maximum medicine approach. And if I get intuitive hits about anything else, I'll toss those in also. So if you were coming to me and I would say, how may I help you today? Okay. Well, I have uh, nodes on my thyroid and they've taken um, biopsies and they're not cancerous, but I would like to get rid of them. And um, I've heard that iodine, low iodine can be a problem. And so Dr. Greger, I've listened to him and he said, take like a teaspoon of dulse flakes every day because that'll help you. And I've been doing that. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to know if you have, uh, if you can, you have any uh, info on what I could do for that. So first, let me say, Dr. Greger is, he's a little bit nerdy, yes. but I, I find him a little nerdy, but he's brilliant in compiling the facts. And mm -hmm. I love that. And he, he brings in stuff, Ayurvedic stuff that, you know, most medical doctors would roll their eyes, but anyway. I like that if he's if he's saying something, I would trust him. I mm. want to hear more about your feelings when you talk about that you've got these and you want to get rid of them. Okay. Well, I do believe that everything that happens to us, uh, every disease we have goes back to, it has to do with energy and it has to do with something that happened to me a long time ago and I'm holding on to that energy and I haven't been able to figure out exactly what it is so I can release it. And I believe that would help me a lot. Um, so I do tell me your Tell me your feelings, your feelings about having these and wanting oh, them. I like it. You mean like, does it hurt or anything? Or just my emotional feelings, physical feelings? Oh. Okay. Physically, emotionally. So physically, they they really don't cause me any issues right now. Physically, um, I don't want to keep getting biopsies. I don't. The doctors just want to do that. They want to biopsy it all the time, and I feel like if you get a biopsy, uh, it just makes it worse. Like you're 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 just pulling stuff out. I don't think that's good. Uh, so that scares me. I don't like that. Um, I worry that. They will cause me more problems as time goes on because they say they'll get bigger and bigger. Um, so emotionally, it's I don't want them. I want them gone. I don't like having them. Um, so when I hear you talk, mm -hmm. first of all, doctors find nodules on your thyroid and then they freak out. Could this be coming cancerous and if it grows bigger we've got to be scared if it's cancerous so we got to do a fine needle aspiration and come back every six months every year every two years for a thyroid ultrasound that goes on and on and on right. and you're what I hear is you're fed up and you don't like always being reminded of what to be afraid of oh uh, yes and I also don't trust that the medical industry I feel a lot of it is based on making money that big pharma uh, pushes a lot of a lot of things, and so I don't necessarily really feel that it's not that the doctors. I believe they they believe everything, but I don't believe we're being told everything that we need to be told. Like you're saying, a lot of it has to do with energy as well, and that whole piece of it is left out of it, and it's your whole body. So the reason you have a problem is not just because of my throat. It's because there's something wrong. What's wrong? I have to find that root of the cause. And our medical industry doesn't do that. 
Right. They would just rather right. just cut it out. If it gets too big, cut it out. That's it. Right. Don't I find understand. the source of what's causing this. I understand. I'm going to take just, I'm going to digress just a second um, and just show you this. Before mm -hmm. the session, I had my bag of stones, and this is Amazonite. And Amazonite is about throat chakra and about speaking your truth. Okay. Anyway, so very interesting that we'll talk about that. And for the listeners, I have offered to, because Donna was so generous with her time, um, I'm going to send her a stone reading, an Amazonite came to me before her. So I'll be sending her details about that. So that's a very nice synchronicity, I think. That's the natural world being our helpers. I agree. So when I think about where you are on the wheel of perspectives, you're in the literal and the emotional portion. How can we shift this to looking at this in terms of a soul journey? What can you see or think about what are you going to learn from this? How does this take you into a higher place? You already said one thing. You said, I know this is bigger than what modern medicine, allopathic medicine can offer me. So it has helped you. I'm just going to make an assessment here. Step into looking at something bigger and assessing for yourself from a different perspective. What else is on that soul piece? What else is a spiritual component here? Have know. you gained anything from this? If you yeah. really look at yourself from your highest perspective, are there any gifts in what seems like a horrible situation? Yeah, I feel like I part of the reason I have it is that I haven't always been heard. Mm -hmm. And I feel that it's helping me empower myself to be more uh, verbal and more uh, assertive with how I feel and how other people and not holding back, not keeping everything in, but letting it out. Right. So when you and you've already intuited for yourself that what's happening here energetically, and I see nodules as a kind of a condensed, um, congealed energy. Um, now we do need structure in our body, so bones aren't always congealed energy, but here, and you're noticing it. So that sense of you now have the higher awareness that this is speaking, speaking interesting, to something more than just having your thyroid gland grow some extra pieces. Mm -hmm. So this is a bigger picture for you to not only step outside of the typical medical approach, and it's challenging you to look elsewhere, but that also, isn't that interesting? When you're doing that, you are speaking for yourself because you have said, no, this whole thing doesn't go down with me. Mm -hmm. I want more. So right there, you have a life experience and a life challenge where you're actually practicing speaking up for yourself. So you are moving and you've already stepped into the spiritual part on that wheel. So let's take the assessment to one of the other other wheels let's take it to um the awareness the four a's you're perfectly aware that you have an issue that is bothersome in terms of the fear the inconvenience the not the mistrust and that you also are aware that this may have a an emotional, energetic, spiritual component that says, wait a second, I need to be speaking more freely, speaking up. How, how do you, in your life, allow help? Where do you get your support? And that can be in the literal world and in the spiritual world. 
Um, I get support. I do meditation. Um, I have a group that we meet on Mondays. And so we read uh, spiritual books. The one that we just read was by Kyle Gray. And we read his older book where he has 111 vibrations. So it's called Raise Your Vibration. So we did all of the 111 together. We did one a day and then we met every week and we talked about it. So we just finished that and now we're doing his challenge. He has a Raise Your Vibration challenge. So within that group, I get a lot of support from them and we talk a lot about just everything and we support each other and we share information and we share um, ideas about energy and, and um, meditation and how to help ourselves. We talk about our inner child a lot and to talk to your inner child um, and that helps you a lot too. We talk about our ego. We talk about a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I find that very helpful. I find the meditation very helpful. Um, I ask for help from guides like angels and the universe. I always call it the universe. I don't say God, I say the universe. And I ask help for the universe. And uh, I really, really, when I said before that love is the answer, I joined the Hay House app. They had a special. And I had the message that love is the answer. I was getting the message. And then I uh, got Kyle Gray. I found Kyle Gray. And his whole thing is about love. He says, where love is, fear cannot exist. And he talks about um, just love, that love, just let your love shine. And so I just get through things like that. I find a lot of help. I love that. And I love that you have a spiritual community. My spiritual community saved me through COVID. Um, and I say that absolutely truthfully. Um, I might cry if I talk about it anymore. Um, saved me in the hard years that we had in the past two and a half years. They were tough. Yeah. My community yeah. guards. So yeah, it sends you stuff. They sent me, the, the universe sent me a community garden just wonderful. when COVID hit. It just was really wonderful. weird. How we were talking about things falling into place. Yep. And that really just helped me so much because I was able to do that and meet people there and be outside. And it was good. So, yeah. So what Kyle and you have now, you've talked about love is, and I don't know if you remember Dr. David Hawkins, and he wrote Power Versus Force. And Someone he did, yeah. in his meditation, he calibrated the different energies and their vibrational height. And love was the top one. Mm -hmm. So you are absolutely right in doing that. So let me tell you the thoughts I have about that. I'd like you to think about spending some time in your own personal meditation. I love that you have a community, but that's a lot of thoughts and a lot of stuff coming in. So I want your own dedicated, quiet, personal time. And I want you to choose a guide that to you represents the highest love. and. That can be your guide if you have a close connection, Mother Mary, one of the Ascended Masters. And I really want you to sit and feel that. I'll take Mother Mary, for example. I connected with her a couple of years ago and I began to, again, the stress of COVID and I used rose spray, rose water spray. And that brought me the sense of peace and the thought of Mother Mary. And when I get stressed, I'm going to tell you a cornball story when I can't sleep at night because I, I worry, I worry about everything, the world, my patients, oh my, anyway, I have Mary put, make me a cap of rose petals. She puts them on and I'm just visualizing that before she even finishes the hat, I'm asleep. So I believe something that powerful for me, I'm getting the hit to, of roses for you. Rose is a very high vibrating oil. Hmm. and. Think about yeah. that coming to your throat. Visualize that on your throat. Even if you've got rose spray. Sorry. Visualize Vis rose or use roses. roses. Oh. Yep, rose petals or Mother Mary um, stroking. On the wheel of elements, you're a little bit stuck, a little bit earth, and uh, you need you actually need water. You need this to be a little more fluid. And again, I can't, this is so wild. Thank you, Stones. 
Amazonite is a, is a water element as well. Just feeling that being more flowing, more fluid, more relaxed. So pick a helper, stay with the high vibration, and with your mental capacity, your conscience, your consciousness, intending that that smooths away. Can I ask when you said I need water, how do I get more water? See, I do energy healings on myself, mm -hmm. like where I bring the energy in and, you know, so I do that. Uh, but how do I get more water? This is a tapping into the energy of water, of the sense of fluid. So in other words, asking your body to be more fluid. And let me back up sitting in meditation with each of the elements. So sitting in with fire in front of you, having a dialogue with fire, and then having that interaction with each of those elements and asking them to be in balance. And Pat, help me on how should yeah. Donna bring water? Yeah, I, I wanna tell you about this and I wanna give it to you really quickly for, for time. Um, Anytime anybody looks at my astrology chart and they find that there is not a single drop of water in it, and this has been going on for decades, I pretty much can give you a list of what it means. So let me start from the very obvious. A bath. You can't take a bath. Sweat. I've been sweating. I've been hot a lot lately. It's good. Because here, no, let me tell you what, it's not good. I know what you mean. Like, okay, I've already been through that. So that's like another show. But here's what I want to say about it is this. When you have this going on, because Linda, uh, one of our producers, when you have this going on and Sharon is so right on, and I love the stone she pulled, because the bottom line is, what does water do? It cleanses. Who are the water totems? Frog, right? Follow me for a minute. So when water is brought in, it's not just literal water, although in your case, I think it is, but there are totems out there that are cleansing. So what is cleansing about? See this, this is something that emotionally, and I think Sharon, you nailed it, physiology wise, this, there's something in here that we have got to dissipate, right? Diffuse, what's a diffuser? What does that thing do, right? It's all water. This has got to be broken up. So when Sharon says water, you have to find the various ways to do that. A bath and at the same time meditation, but don't bring anything electric in the tub. But you know what I'm saying? A bath, salt. With, maybe Absolutely. with rose oil. Rose, thank you. Rose oil or people don't like the oil in the tub. Here's what you do. You're going to get some roses. You're going to boil them and you're going to have sacred rose water. Okay. Rose water, spray your throat. Rose oil, here, right? See, I could go on, but I don't want to take up the time. Um, what I'll do when Sharon sends you this, I can send you my list because I'm telling you, I have eight planets over there, oh, up there, and they are fire and earth. So my, my life's journey is water. The other thing is, should I be obvious? drink and sweat drink water go ahead sharon did i help or did i hinder that <laughs> that was wonderful that was wonderful and just intending and producers we're going to postpone our break for another five or ten minutes let you know yeah you might as well skip intending, it if you want, in, okay let's skip it yep. intending that you wash you feel water washing through or you sit in meditation with each of the elements in front of you, like you're in circle, and you will intuit which you're out of balance and ask them to get back in alignment because you've got a little too much earth here, a little too much congested solid. We love solid in our bones. We love solid in our way we can stand our ground. Um, but fluidity also comes with your speech. So being more fluid in how quickly you step in, voice your opinion, 
Um, I'm going to send you the details on Amazonite because it's a, it's a, and the other one that came for you today was amethyst, I have which, is, that. which is high vibrating, very high vibrating. That's so, your pin, right? That is your, that is your third eye. Yes. So the color for your throat chakra is, is blue and it's usually um, an electric blue. So meditating on that color blue also. And so we've talked about your helpers. We've talked about the elements. We've talked about the perspectives. So what kind of ritual can you do? So what I'd like you to think about is if you're in meditation and you set an intention for this to be dissolved, dissipated, disappeared, calmed down, at least don't grow anymore. We don't want the doctors to get all freaked out. Calm down, set an intention, and then let's think of a ritual for you to do. Are you an outdoor girl? Do you have an altar at home? Tell me more about your spiritual. Okay, I, I have a garden, so I do a lot of gardening. I like outdoors. I go for walks. Um, so that's the outdoor, uh, the outdoorsy part. You know, I do like the outdoors. And so, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that's okay. But it is getting colder, so I don't know. Um, I don't really like to be out that much when it's really cold. Mm -hmm. uh, so, where do you live? I live in New York, in Glen in on Long Island. I was born in Flushing and my grandparents were from Garden City. Oh, okay. I lived in Flushing North for a while. Uh-huh. Out here. Yeah. yeah. So this is I want you to to make a prayer bundle and offering to the higher spirits. So this in the Andean tradition, we call this a despacho, which means dispatch but it really means an offering. It's your message of thanks. So you're gonna go on your nature walk and you're gonna collect nature elements and you're gonna stop at a favorite place and you're going to make a little bundle, make a little diagram, pile, um, put a few twigs, put a few. And as you put each element down, you're gonna say your prayer, your intention. Please let this be dissipated and you'll lay it down and you'll set that. Mm -hmm. And as you set that, you're going to leave it for nature and the spirits to take that offering. Everything is about gratitude. Again, how you love their help, how you love nature, how you love the fact that you get to be in this body, even with its challenges. Here's a leaf, a beautiful maple that's now a sugar maple, so it's gorgeous orange. My intention, a, gore, a perfect twig, a dried piece of grass with a foxtail at the top, and just pile it up in a blessings to your higher beings, to, to the universe. In that way, you have an offering where you are saying, I'm asking you for this, but I'm giving you this pile of beauties in my gratitude to you. And what I say in my book, and I say, probably I say it too, all the time, you can't have a relationship with higher beings unless you have a reciprocal relationship. You can't keep asking without giving back. And what I say is nothing sends a power animal or a spirit guide packing, except your guardian angel who never leaves, even if you're a total turkey, if you don't honor and respect and have gratitude. So here you're out in nature, appreciating the beauty, you're asking for help, but you have gratitude for their help, which you know is going to come. You know it's, you just know it's gonna come. So you're mm -hmm. thanking even for the future. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. Uh, someone told me once that trees have a lot of energy and don't just take the energy from the trees, give it back to them. So I always try to do that, to, to send energy back and say thank you. And 
trees I, I, have saved uh, trees will save our planet they've been around a long time yeah so i love that um yeah, we, go ahead. Mm -hmm. and then rose petals in the water if you you know go buy a few roses pick the petals put them in your um you can even rinse them off and put them in your drinking water um i'll send you when i send your uh stone reading i'll just say this for other listeners but i'll send you the link altea organics is a bulgarian company that distributes in the united states and they have an organic rose water that is beyond exceptional okay. a l t e y a and i'll put that um i'll put that in on your email okay. so pat what else can we think for donna before we no oh, please go ahead interrupt you sorry um when you said to create a ritual now what you just talked about is a ritual but should yes. i also create something that i do every day like where where one day I do fire, one day I do water, one day I do air, one day I do, uh, what's the other one? I'm missing one. Um, water. Air, water. Fire, earth. Earth. So um, should I create a ritual that I do like every day where I call yes. them and I ask them, and, and can it just be visualizing or should I actually be like when I'm doing earth, I should be outside doing it or standing grounded or... Yeah you yeah. choose it's always good to involve more senses and more so movement mm -hmm. but your intuition will create the ritual and the ritual is you in meditative quiet space with higher beings for a purpose that's what the ritual is all about okay and you can sit in meditation and dialogue with each element. You can sit with them all in a group, sit, you know, give them, give them faces, give them personas, you know, sit with these guys all around you in a circle and say, all right, like you're the chairman of the board. Okay, guys, um, you know, you kind of acted up a little bit today. What can we do about getting you back in line here? Um, but Pat, what else do you have for Donna? I think you really covered it. I think one of the things that's important, especially if you live in Long Island is, you know, you're really at the time now when this is something I do here in the Pacific Northwest. I have a little deck out here and I'm like you, I like the nature and it does get a little cold, but when I have to bring water in, especially rose water, what I'll do is I'll just heat up something to put in my foot bath and I'll heat that water up and I'll put my rose petal in. And then even if I sit outside for five minutes, it is the energetic integration of nature and you know about the feet right what our feet bring up so what you've got is you're sitting out five minutes even if it's cold you got your feet in hot water not too hot you got the rose petals in there and you have your time for your integration of energy and meditation it really only does take five minutes i mean you could stay out longer not a bit that would be another way to really start to integrate the water element and the energy of water into nature that you love. Mm -hmm. And I hope you got better tomatoes than I did this year. <laughs> I did actually. <laughs> Sharon, what a great show. My God. So this Donna, is, I have to take one time more. to process, right, Sharon? Right. Donna, I have one more question for you. Do you have arthritis? No. Show me your hands. Okay. Like this? Yeah, I just, I just wondered if you had some arthritis in your fingers. No. Okay, good. Well, water will be good to loosen any of that up. But like putting my so, hands. On Rose, back to Rose, Mother Mary, even though you don't have to be Christian to appreciate the energies of Mother Mary. Mary, that's that is all love. Mother Mary is the epitome of love. And Rose is high vibrating and very open hearted um, vibration, very, um, very loving vibration. So you put those energies together and ask them in your meditation for their healing benefits. And again, ending with gratitude. 
I think that's a powerhouse of making things different than better for you. Well, thank you. Thank Do you, you have both. Any? Oh, you're so welcome. It's my pleasure. Do you have any questions? I think I have a good idea of what to do, have my earth elements, make sure I have air and I have water and um, the roses are very mm -hmm. important yeah. and uh, to do it every day and have my ritual every day, whatever I decide exactly mm -hmm. that's going to be, do the nature, go out in nature and uh, gather leaves and twigs and whatever, nice rocks and then offer that up as gratitude in a nice pile and do that often, right? Or just whenever I feel like it? Whenever you feel it, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and I, if I'm you, I'm walking with a little spritzer. I have a little spritzer bottle. I don't know, I don't, it's not a real name, like a little bottle. And that's what I do. I mean, if you come in the office, I've got them here, I've got them over there and that's water. It's mist. Frist yourself, yes. That's mist a great yourself. Idea. Thank you. I, I, I missed you already. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, what's that move? Play Misty for me. Oh my. Oh my gosh. That that. So is, yeah. at the last, we're going to close up, but I'm going to ask Lydia and Colton of the last uh, two minutes before we close up, if you'll put up the final, the the animated movie of the Maximum Medicine approach and. Donna, thank you so much for being here. Dr. Pat, thank you for helping me move this along. Mm -hmm. And Donna, I'm going to send you the stone reading because I'm not kidding, Amazonite came in loud and clear. Yeah. I'm looking Amethyst. forward to <laughs> Well, yeah, it's going to be fun. So thank, thank you, everybody. Yeah. You. And Sharon, I just want to mention, I mean, what happened here today, you, if you go to Sharon's website, drsharonmartin.com, this is work that Sharon does with people individually and Donna for you too, if you want an extended version of this. So I want to make sure that folks know all your information is on your website, on social media, and they can work with you directly because this was customized for you, Donna. Okay. Right. This was just for you. Donna, thank you so much. Really. Thank you. Yeah. I loved it. It was really great. And I'm going to implement everything. And I thank you so much. I really oh, you're did. very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank All you, right, Sharon. Lydia Colton, thank you, Dr. Pat. Thank you. And if those guys will show the animated movie. Yeah, they've we'll got it. All right. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. You've been listening to Maximum Medicine Radio with Doc Martin. Tune in next time while the doc talks health, spirituality, and the impact your beliefs have on every part of who you are, body and soul. Doc Martin unpacks the challenges we face as human beings and teaches callers to open the door between the scientific and the mystical. To learn more about Doc Martin and Maximum Medicine, visit www.sharonmartinmd.com.